In the span of just a few months, the novel virus, known as COVID-19, has wreaked havoc on our world. The value of shares fell off a cliff. Creating sudden impacts, not only to people's health, but also economic well-being and general psyche. Everyone's very fearful at the moment. And the question mark is, where does this end? The medical crisis, which first emerged in late December of 2019 in Wuhan, China, quickly spread to more than 100 countries on six continents. Confirmed infections climbed above 100,000, leading more than 5,000 deaths. Those most at risk, older people or patients with underlying ailments. Part of the coronavirus family of pathogens, named for their structural spikes, COVID-19 may be related to the common cold, but it can be much more dangerous, like the other coronaviruses which caused outbreaks of severe acute respiratory syndrome and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, SARS and MERS. All morning, ambulances moved victims of the new killer virus. SARS patients effectively in quarantine until the disease is under control. Uh, these are often quite nasty airborne spread diseases that kind of reside somewhere in the respiratory system and can be quite contagious. COVID-19 symptoms include coughing, fever, and shortness of breath. The virus damages the lungs, causing pneumonia. And uh, we know that it's replicating quite efficiently, uh, both in the upper and lower respiratory tract of, of humans. So uh, this is a virus that was already well adapted to replication in humans, and that's why we're seeing uh, the spread that we're seeing. Every day, we're learning more and more and more. Um, obviously, because this is a novel virus, and even though we've been to this rodeo before with MERS and SARS, there's still so many unknowns. And that's why the World Health Organization, or WHO, declared a pandemic as of March 11th, after repeatedly stressing the serious nature of the situation. This is not a drill. This is not the time to give up. This is not a time of for excuses. This is a time for pulling out all the stops. The fight is on, and the most effective strategies aim first to prompt preparations, and then contain and mitigate the damage. This is not the first contagion we've confronted, and history contains lessons about what works and sometimes what doesn't. Pandemic are a major threat, but we are in the position now in 2020 to fight the pandemic. COVID-19 travels through the air in respiratory droplets, like those contained in a cough or sneeze. Exactly how long the exposed virus can survive is unknown perhaps a couple of hours. So touching infected surfaces, like handrails, doorknobs, or tabletops, has the potential to transmit the disease, as do personal greetings. If you shake hands, you might be transferring biomatter that's contagious and then touching your face, which can lead to the spread of the, the disease in, in one's own body. It's extraordinary how many times each hour we touch our face. So regular hand washing is extremely important. Once the virus establishes itself in a population, passing person to person, it's much harder to contain. So American health officials recognize the crisis will grow. And then when you get community spread, it makes the challenge much greater. So I can say we will see more cases and things will get worse than they are right now. But how might we stave off the most dire eventualities? The first things to do is to contain by lowering the transmissibility of the disease. And how to do that is through what we call social distancing. So it is important to identify cases and infections as soon as possible and isolate those people, put in the right hospital setting so that they cannot 
transmit the disease to other individuals. But with an average incubation period of five days and symptoms often not occurring until day 12, COVID-19 can move quickly and quietly. We do know that those individuals who might not be actually experiencing any symptoms of illness have the capacity to spread it, which means that public health responses need to figure out ways to even monitor the health and potential transmission rates uh, amongst people who appear by, by all understandings to be healthy. And that will change how we live our lives, curtailing large public gatherings like sporting events, political rallies, even religious services. While children appear to be at low risk to the virus's most dangerous effects, they could be transmission vectors and unknowingly spread the virus. One reason school closures will likely increase, controlling contact with potentially infected individuals becomes critical, as does the behavior of those already feeling ill, according to the Center for Disease Control. You may need to take a break from your normal daily routine for two weeks. So staying home when you are sick is really important. Don't let the illness spread beyond you. Stay away as much as you can from other people. The WHO estimated a COVID-19 death rate of 3.4%, an alarming figure, which may vary country by country, trending higher in places with older populations or overloaded health systems. But many people who contract the disease may only suffer mild symptoms. So two weeks self-imposed isolation practices are encouraged for anyone suspected of coming in contact with the virus. When it comes to COVID-19, it's not just your health you need to worry about, it's the health of those around you and who you might infect even if you're not necessarily feeling so bad yourself. Ultimately, the goal is to limit the transmission and keep hospitals open and accessible. I think there's a well tried and tested uh, phrase and that is to be alert but not alarmed. I, I think the last thing we need is uh, panic about this virus. You don't want the healthcare system to be overwhelmed. That's one of the, the major, the major uh, way to, to, to fight the disease. In 1918, the Spanish flu encountered a planet on the brink already stretched thin by World War I. You know, for, for a opportunistic disease, this was the, the perfect moment. You know, around the world, resources were scarce. Uh, health systems had been taxed by the war. And as a result, we were not, as a species, we were not in a, in a great position to respond to a major global epidemic. An estimated 50 million people died worldwide, including 675,000, which occurred in America. Devastating, but could it have been even worse? So what we saw, especially in the United States, the towns and cities that implemented non-pharmaceutical interventions aimed at social distancing earlier were more effective at preventing the worst effects of epidemic spread and ultimately death. Perhaps technology today will be an ally in this regard. Some businesses can continue remotely through mandatory telework. Students can receive instructions online. Of course, in other ways, our modern lifestyles and interconnected world often benefits our virological opponents. And as the world has become increasingly more globalized, the pace of um, trade and traffic has increased with you know, faster ships, faster planes, faster uh, mechanisms of trade. The concern for epidemic spread around the world has become even more significant. And uh, every place in the world is one flight away from almost all other places. And as we always say, disease have no borders. But countries will seek to protectively seal themselves off from the virus. Israel now requires all international arrivals to self-quarantine for a period of two weeks. And the United States issued new restrictions for travel from most of Europe. 
to keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. In the early days of this public health emergency, the Chinese government limited travel during the New Year holiday, hoping to stem the tide of the disease, locking down 60 million people in Hubei province, including 11 million in the city of Wuhan, the epidemic's first epicenter. The bustling megacity quickly turned into a ghost town. But the scale of the quarantines in, in China really are on a level that we haven't seen as, uh, as, as humans uh, ever. But then, the second week of March saw Italy, the hardest hit country in Europe, follow suit. Putting the whole country under red zone restrictions, all 60 million people. Drastic times call for drastic measures. School closings, business suspensions, and curfews. This, in the country where quarantines originated during the Middle Ages, to protect port cities like Venice from incoming disease. Where the word quarantine comes from quarantina, which is basically the, the withholding or control of ships or goods or people for a period of 40 days. And these quarantines were largely imposed in response to the threat of bubonic plague. So this was you know, the period around the Black Death in Europe, which obviously was devastating. Those early quarantines evolved into the control and closure of districts impacted by disease. The city health authority would attempt to shut down spaces, control and sanitize the streets. Despite not understanding necessarily germ theory, these were kind of early sanitary practices that would attempt to kind of tidy up a potential um, infectious space. Quarantines, however, can be manipulated and expand inequities and injustice. In 1901 in, in Cape Town, the arrival of bubonic plague in the city was met with very aggressive, racially specific quarantining and segregation of much of the city's uh, black African population. And this model of forced removal really formed the model, the architecture for, for what we think of as, you know, one of the quintessential forms of social control that we saw in the 20th century, the, the South African apartheid township. In 2020, in order to be successful against COVID-19, prevention and preparation measures must be uniformly implemented. Because this is a battle for everybody, uh, for the humankind. We need to think about countries that might have less ready and prepared uh, care systems, but there is a lot that we can do. That requires investment, that requires preparation. Although it seems a big cost now, it will be much less than the bill that a pandemic that goes uh, unchecked uh, will, will present us. From 2014 to 2016, West African nations, Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia endured an outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus. Going in to collect the Ebola dead is one of the riskiest jobs in the world right now. But these Red Cross volunteers know it's one that has to be done. All the evidence suggests the majority of new Ebola cases are directly linked to people who had contact with a dead body. Burying people quickly and safely is key to getting this outbreak under control. The last time a loved one might have seen their beloved was at the moment when they were taken away in an ambulance. And because burials had to be taken care of in a particularly sanitized way, it often meant that, that loved ones and families never got to say goodbye and in some cases may not have known where their family members were, were actually buried. Altering burial customs took a great emotional toll and endangered the safety of healthcare workers. The outbreak killed more than 11,000 people before health authorities lifted the crisis. But grassroots education efforts helped lead to behavioral change, impacting the course of infection. I think we can look at aspects of the Ebola response, especially community-led 
aspects of the Ebola response as, as very successful in West Africa, i.e. responses that relied on the support of the public. So these were practices like refraining from shaking hands, the application and implementation of hand washing stations outside of restaurants, hotels, uh, major buildings, post offices, etc., to provide access to uh, sanitary and hygienic services, and also, you know, curfews and the limitations on, on large public gatherings. Some of those same practices can help combat COVID-19. Washing your hands thoroughly. Minimizing contact with infected people by employing social distancing tactics. The beauty of, of, of the human spirit and also um, to the human race as, as social animals means that even in the absence of some of our most basic uh, forms of greeting or interaction, uh, it doesn't mean we can't figure out new ones in response to, to a moment of crisis. An army of scientists around the world race to develop a vaccine to combat COVID-19. But these efforts take time, and the coronavirus health crisis grows. Uncertain future, perhaps, but not all is lost. The bottom line is we're not at the mercy of the virus. The great advantage we have is that the decisions we all make as governments, businesses, communities, families, and individuals can influence the trajectory of this epidemic.